Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we're doing our follow-up video on Melina Sicciotti. I know I said her name wrong. It's Sicciotti, which also rhymes with Melina CC Hypocrisy. That's a bad joke. I don't know. Anyway, I, I needed to do a follow-up because I had to go down a deep, dark well of craziness to find out what happened because we tore apart her Christian video where God said that she didn't have to be held accountable because the devil was there. And uh, I wanted to know what went down. It's quite garbagey too. It's kind of icky. And this seems to be indicative of a lot of influencers, especially Christian grifters, big time. The Christian ones are the worst. We'll tell you all about it. Let's go. So if you don't know what Melina Cicciotti is, she is a Christian grifter, family vlogger, slash fake liar, face, McFacerson. And uh, she basically just lies. I mean, it's crazy. That I, I just went down the rabbit hole for a little while. It is an insane amount of lies. Her family is racist. Uh, her husband is, you know, on roids. And she does surgeries and everything else. But they come across like, oh, this is it. This is the thing about Christians in churches. And I let some people push back on this. But this is it, man. These are the type of people that go to churches, to like big churches. They're better than you. They didn't make the same bad choices you made, except they did, but they don't need you to know about that. They just want you to see what they see now. They talk about how they're so perfect and they judge everybody else, yet they have probably some of the most secretive, disgusting lies than... It's, it's amazing how many, I mean, guys, you know, I was a pastor. I went to church for, since I was 12, I've seen so many people fall inside the church due to moral failings and other things. Churches are full of hypocrisy, full of people who are just scared to tell the truth. Even though churches, especially my ex church will say things like no perfect people allowed, except they still come and they still act perfect. And yet so many people are struggling with hardships and hurt and the church just glosses over it. It became, it became a country club where you're not even allowed to be part of the inner circle unless you're perfect. And I talked about this too on one of my episodes. I'm not sure which one it was about the idea that the church is so against transgenders. For example, we'll take adults because adults, consenting adults can make decisions, right? So they would be against an adult saying, Hey, I want to get a surgery to change my body. Right. But they're, They'd be like, whoa, you're like, that's a sin, bruh. Jesus like totes thinks you're sinning, dude. And they just, and they're telling you this in front of their children. <laughs> that same woman who's braiding you has fake breasts, right? She has, she has fillers in her lips. She has shit done everywhere. Probably has her hair dyed. That is changing your body to something that God didn't give you. So you're a hypocrite, a-holes. Anyway. I know that the church hurt me and I, that's, you know, and I'm deconstructing. And so, yes, I come at the church from a very, very, very hurt perspective. And people keep coming at me like that's a bad thing. Look, if you're angry at something, you're allowed to talk about it. You're allowed to break it down and say, hey, learn from it all. And now I'm going to show you guys how shitty it is. That is okay, everybody. Why is it that Christians specifically tell people who've been hurt by the church, you shouldn't talk about it? Mormons do this too. Shouldn't talk about it. Why shouldn't I talk about it? Suck my ass. I'll talk about it as much as I want. I'm hurt, and so I'm going to talk about it, and I want to teach people what to avoid. So, Melina Cicciotti is that type of person you should avoid at all costs, like Brittany Dawn, these grifters. This is something I thought about over the last few days, thinking about all this stuff. Is that these big churches, even some that I love, yes, I love Hillsong's music, I love the music. I wish we could just have church music, just and no preaching, no pastor standing up there full of roids or fat bastards up there preaching or women who are just as bad making millions. I wish we could just have churches full of really good music. Just let the music talk. Let your heart do the talking. So you go to these, then maybe I'll do it myself where you just go to church and you just worship. You don't need a message. Hey, you guys tonight, go home and read your Bible by yourself this week. Go read it all week. Don't have a leader. Don't have a pastor. Maybe the movement for churches should be no more pastors. <gasps> Don't stab me in the eye. I'm just saying, just thinking, right? No more celebrity Christians. That would make this a little bit better. Yeah, maybe not because there still would be celebrity musician Christians. So you wouldn't get away with it, but I wish I could just go to church and just the music part. I love it. Anyway, I miss it the most. So all I have to say, Melina Cicciotti, this is how you got to roll with this. You have to go over to the snark thread, 
Melina Ciciati Snark 2. Okay, this thread is chocked full of everything you need to know about Melina. And as I was doing my video, they had a live thread about it. And they're like, oh, we wish you knew everything. And these people are invested in this and they know everything. There's timestamps and there's people that are collecting just all the hypocrisy. And so we're going to cover it today's video. And it's going to be basically what you're going to see about Melina Ciciati and Christian grifters in general. And I hope this is what you take from this is that stop listening to them because they're a bunch of hypocrite asshole liars. And they wouldn't have to be if they just came out and told the truth. Why are Christians so afraid of telling the truth? Again, as a pastor myself, I said this in my, if you haven't seen my ex-pastor series, go watch it. You will be hooked. It's like watching a Netflix series. You won't be able to stop watching it. Um, but basically I felt as a pastor that I had to live above reproach, which is fine. And I understood that living a better life out in public everywhere else. And I, I did, I took that very seriously because I'm in a small town ish and I'm at the mall and I'm being a prick to somebody or whatever. Or if I get cut off and I give someone the finger and then I drive by them and it's a person at my church, right? Living above reproach is, is a necessity to being a pastor. Basically it means that you have to live better than everybody. You have to live pretty clean. And that's great. I did. Um, but at the same time, I also, as a pastor, when I did struggle with things, I had nobody I could talk to. I couldn't you know, when I was struggling with anything that it, you couldn't tell your leadership because you'd probably get fired for it. Right. I got fired because I wasn't a good fit. Right. You got to go listen to this. I have recorded the conversation. If you want to know why I got fired from a church, you can actually hear the audio of me being fired. Is you, you, there's no, there's no guessing games. You can go listen to it yourself. A lot of my haters will come up and be like, wonder why you're fired from being a pastor, Josh. It's because you, you swear on YouTube. No dumbass. Go listen yourself, <laughs> idiots. Anyway, so I didn't have anybody to talk to, right? Pastors live on an island. We're supposed to be perfect, live above reproach and all that kind of stuff. But when you have an issue, you can't really have a best friend because eventually someone will throw you under the bus or they'll gossip. Church is full of gossipers. They want to know your shit. And I knew this, especially since I had so many friends at my church, Creekside, when I left, Okay. I had, when I was at Creekside, I had so many friends. I was a worship pastor. I was very, very well known in my community. As soon as I was fired though, as soon as I was fired, no friends, a couple, obviously kept a few, you know, your real ones are cause they stuck with you. Right. Um, and you know, Tom was one of those guys and I had some other friends that was stuck by me through this Brent, my guitar player, a couple guys who really did, but not a lot. Like, I mean, like of the hundreds I had five, maybe. Right. So, you know, who you are, you can't, as a pastor, it's really, really difficult to reach out and to get help. I say all that because Christians like Melina, when they're called out in their lies, they'll double down. I mean, you just keep lying. You realize it's a sin, right? When you're humbled, be humbled and then ask forgiveness. Christians, if you just came out and said, guys, you're right. I was wrong. I lied. Can you forgive me? Even if they don't forgive, it doesn't matter. You've come out and said the thing, but she doubles down, deletes comments and everything. This is why Instagrammers, YouTubers, TikTokers, and all the rest should stop grifting for money. If you want to get out and give a good message on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, you're not making money off it. If you've got something really good to say, if you've got some kind of, you know, different view of something, I'm, I'll listen if you're talented. I will. I love Francis Chan. If you guys haven't had an opportunity to listen to Francis Chan, do yourself a favor. Okay. One of the realest pastors I've ever heard in my life. The guy was at his church. He says, I'm leaving because people are, are considering me the God. Like he said, I'm more famous than God in this church. So I'm done. He left. He just left. He left this massive church they built. That's the kind of leadership I want to see. So the reason I say I'm covering Melina and covering this Christian shit is because when you can't apologize, when you can't be humbled, you are setting a bad example. You need to learn to be humbled more. Everybody loves somebody who's humble. Everybody doesn't. Nobody likes cocky a-holes. Nobody likes that. So that's why I'm always learning. I'm never always right. And if I'm wrong, I'll call it out because I, I think humility is important in my life. I think being humble, a little self-depreciating is, is important. Just keep yourself a little bit grounded. So let's go through this. If you go there, new members read first. So I'm going to just be pulling from this because this has got all the tea. All right. So Melina has been called out in many, many things. Okay. So we'll go through them all. Here's lying. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but I'm just going to go through the, the main stuff, the lies and stuff that she has told and has been caught in and refuses to admit. Okay. So lying proof. Melina lied about her doctor missing her low iron. She admits doctors caught it here. So let's look at this. It's all in a neat little row here. So here we go. The doctor came in and told me, sorry, let me stop here. Stop wearing these effing hats, Christians. Stop it. 
I think I honestly believe this. They wear them because it looks like a halo. I kid you not. There's some psychology here that like, if you look like you, like, you know, the old paintings of the angels and stuff like that, the saints, the, I think it's a halo because you look stupid. You're indoors wearing a dumb hat. Stop wearing dumb hats. That my iron levels came back really low. It's common for your iron to be a little bit lower during pregnancy because you have so much blood. And my iron was around like 10, I think when I first got pregnant. And then it went down to around eight. So around November, December time, it was around eight, which is a little bit low, but not too concerning. So I was taking iron pills, not as consistently as I should have, but I was taking them along with my prenatals. Okay. So basically the lie here is that I clocked this lie so fast posted by reasonable 18, some number <laughs> Melina states that 436 that one of her reasons for having at home birth is because her OBGYN, OG, OBGYN. Missed her low iron. And then she admits here that no, she didn't. That she was not taking iron pills. A small lie, but a lie nonetheless. Why Why lie about weird things? So I think she gets, I think what happens with, with pathological liars, especially Christians who, who now you've dug yourself in too deep, is that you weave this incredible just web of lies that it's almost impossible to keep track of which ones you did. Let this be a lesson to anybody, Christians, non-Christians, whatever the case may be. Stop lying about everything. Look, a white lie here and there. He's, you know, does I look good in this, these pants? Sure. I, you know, I'm just saying stop. I know these types of people who lie about absolutely everything for no reason. There's really no reason for her to justify why she had a home birth. Who cares? She had a home birth. Why do they feel like they need to answer for everything and then just lie about that? It's such a weird thing. Stop it. All right, next one. Proof Melina lied to her doctor performing a membrane sweep. So this was a pretty big one a lot of people were mentioning. So Melina the liar on TikTok, please feel free to screen record and video post it. So basically, I think she said something about how, I don't know why she would lie about the doctor giving a membrane sweep. You don't know what membrane sweep is. It's they sweep the inside of your vag to get that pregnancy going. Like, like unseal the shit from around the other shit. That's the scientific term for it. It can jumpstart pregnancy. Membrane without... Um so let's watch this gong show. Um, and both my doctors did sweep my membrane without permission. She had two sweeps without permission is what she said. First of all, what? The doctors, I don't think a doctor would ever sweep your membrane without permission. They're sticking their fingers in your stuff. Okay. In your regions of nether. Without your permission? I don't think so. I don't think a doctor would sweep a membrane without saying, hey, I'm about to sweep your membrane. You ready? Because I'm pretty sure I was there when my wife had it done, and I'm pretty sure it's painful or like very uncomfortable. I don't know. I don't have a membrane to sweep. 38 week appointment. I was going to be 39 weeks in a couple of days, and my doctor just said, call it 39 weeks then, okay? It's two days off, 39 weeks. I did just swap my membrane. I had asked her to do it because I just. Ding, 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 ding. I've asked, so she's lying. Knew that there would kind of kickstart labor, and it did. So she swept my membrane on a Wednesday, and I had him on a Saturday. So on that Wednesday, she, um, so there, again, just compiling all the lies here in a nice little video because I have a bigger platform than most. I want people to know that Melina Ciciotti is a damned liar face. Your pants are just—they're not even on fire anymore. They're just dust in the wind, and you're standing out there with your membrane. So that one bugs me because a lot of people, this pregnancy, world of pregnancy and family vlogging is a big deal. Okay. The world of, of, of family vlogging and having babies on YouTube is, is, is big because so many women go through struggles of infertility. They go through, they themselves are pregnant and they're all going to this information. It is a weird world to be in because of things that you say. Like, I know there's another, there's a vlogger out there that said something about, and I think I have to cover her soon. She said that because she had a C-section wasn't real birth. Who the hell would ever say something stupid? But my wife was judged crazily. I remember, I remember this clearly because obviously we're in church and, you know, pe people are assholes. But my wife was judged for certain things that she wanted to do. You know, I remember Love Meg giving her pregnancy things saying, I did it without a, without a, whatever you call it. The thing that stops you from feeling pain. And they're like, yeah, high five. And she, and it's like, it's like a bad, it's like a badge of honor. Can I just tell you guys here? And I continue and have to tell you this from a dude's perspective, because maybe you don't get it enough. And maybe I don't have a voice, whatever. Take it for what it's worth. You are effing superheroes, moms, 
not just ones who give birth either. Moms in general, if you adopt, if you foster, if you're any type of mom who even takes care of your nephews, nieces, if you are a woman who cares for children and watches out for them in any capacity, you're an effing superhero. Doesn't matter how they got here. But let's go to the birth side. If you've given birth, you're a superhero. The end. Okay. You grew a child in your body and it came out of you and it's now here. And it steps on your nuts all the time, puts Cheerios everywhere, breaks all the toys, broke my Oculus the other day. It is what it is. I'm just saying, please stop comparing shit like this. It's so weird. My wife got, was reduced to tears on our first daughter because we had did her, we had finished her bedroom and it was beautiful. And we had a closet full of diapers and they were just the normal ones you get for a baby, right? The first step of babies. I don't know how you call that. The number ones are some shit. And she, she was reduced. I'm like, why are you crying? She said, well, they're all coming at me because I bought too many diapers. I said, what the F? What? And we didn't buy too many diapers, by the way. We used every damn one of those diapers. We had to buy more. That kid shit a lot. So I want to just say that that's, that's why this matters. Why she has to weave a web of lies. But that is stupid. Why would you lie about that? Why would you say the doctor did what permission? And again, it might be like, were you trying to get a lawsuit going? What are you, why would you lie about a membrane sweep? That's what I'm saying. Sorry. Weird, weird. I don't belong in this world, but I'm going to do it anyway. Melina's saying she never wore swimsuits around Jordan, which I think is her husband. Timestamp 415. Here we go. Let's go. Hey guys. So for today's video, hey. we're going to be talking about this, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Don't please. <laughs> All right, hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, thank you. F for off, where is it? Oh, we would rarely like ever go swimming together. Like I would never really wear a bathing suit around him. Um, I don't know, just like little things. Figure out what tempts the person more than other things and just avoid that. Oh, that I see what's going on. So she's doing a purity culture thing. Don't wear bathing suits around boys. Okay, what are you going to swim in? A burka? What? Do you just don't go swimming? I don't understand. Swimming's fun. And then here's swimsuit before marriage picture, I guess. We're going to look at it. Oh, look, she's wearing almost nothing. I can... The line cuts off. Doesn't look like you're wearing any clothes, so she's lying. So does anyone have the clip of them saying they didn't wear bathing suits and that's what we just watched? <laughs> oh, I love this site. And then here's another one. Just, it's so conveniently located. And... So she didn't wear bathing. This is when they were dating. Okay. So this is January 4th, 2014. So they were, or she, this is married. I don't know with a baby. I don't know. So anyway, just a, another small lie. And it's not even the fact that she said she wouldn't wear a bathing suit around him. She lied about it because she's trying to virtue signal as a Christian, but she wore like almost nothing. If I wore that, I would be arrested. Okay. She looks like she's wearing a bow tie on her boobs. It's really and she's, so not only did she wear bathing suits around her boyfriend, she wore almost nothing. Skin colored, nothing around her boyfriend. So liar, liar, membrane on fire. <laughs> All right. Appearance, cosme cosmetic procedures. This is the big one. I thought that I, that she was alluding to about like liposuction or suction sculpting or sculpt mashing. I don't know what you call it. You sculpt shit and go for it if you want to. Absolutely sculpt it. So why lie about it? Okay, so Melina's lip filler before here and after. So here we go. People are like, com like, holy shit. She looks like a completely different person. Well, she's probably pregnant in this picture. Maybe she's a little bit thicker, but yeah, that's lip filler galore. So again, nothing wrong inherently with it. Stop lying about getting it then. Why do you lie about it? What? People can just see it. I can, I can look at a girl... Anywhere. And I can tell if she's got lip filler in her face. Like it, it doesn't look natural. I've never seen one. Well, maybe I have, maybe, maybe the ones that are really good are really expensive and they can't afford it, but I've never, I, it doesn't look natural. Okay. So, uh, and here, here's another one. Holy, she didn't have any lips before. So she's a straight damned liar. Okay. Melina, you straight up liar. Okay. Kardashian wannabe. You kidding me? She looks like this cartoon character here. Come on. That's not real. So, and she was fine before. Can we stop with having massive giant ass lips, please? And just get a little bit if you like it. It makes you feel better. Sure, if it makes you feel good. But at some point, maybe have a friend that's, you just have a, a trusted friend that says, hey, look, if I start doing this, just, you have permission to call me out. Get it to a point where you look great and trust somebody. But chill. Okay? How do you even chew? Okay. So, 
Next one is Jordan telling us not to be jealous of Melina of her natural beauty and her admitting to lip filler here. Okay, let's do it. Oh, there's okay. There's so much, right? I mean, obviously. Okay, so this is her boyfriend, I think her husband. Um, roids. Never once. Don't even roids. Stop roids. You can only control your appearance so much, right? I mean, obviously, there's. We live in the plastic surgery age, mm -hmm. and everything is fake. And Why are your mic arms 45 feet away from your camera? Just put the table closer. You're bad at this. Photoshop. The mics are good. The audio is good. Popped and airbrushed and filtered. Exactly. I don't have to justify and like talk about this. I already did it. I'm going to keep doing it. It's other than my own and I do it for myself. So she's admitting here to So excuse me. Does her husband not know that she does these procedures? Does he just wake up one day and be like, hey, your lips are 14 times bigger than they were yesterday. Is that pregnancy hormones? Or he doesn't care? What? I don't understand. Why is he saying shit knowing, and he must know, he's married to her, knowing that she has these procedures done. So he's a hypocrite too. Okay. I've been doing it for almost five years now. I think people just like jump on people for that, but it's like, okay, do you have your eyebrows microbladed? Do you have eyelash extensions? Are you wearing makeup right now? Mm -hmm. All of those things have the I ability don't. to alter and change the way that you look. <laughs> but you know, these people are naturally beautiful and it's like some people think, you know, they're not naturally beautiful and they have to do something to enhance that. Like is she not, she must just be a space cadet. Does she not realize that she, why didn't she chime in and say, hey, I did that too, husband. Remember? You paid for it. <laughs> this shit's expensive. He's such a hypocrite, man. He knows. It's like, well, there's nothing. There's like, don't get mad at Milena because she's naturally beautiful. Oh, here we go. The devil's just jealous. <laughs> I get that you want to go to bat for your wife. I understand that. I do get that. But dude, really? Don't be jealous of her because she's natural. You know by the receipts that she's not natural, you lying a-hole. the hell's wrong with you? That makes you look like a twat. I can call dudes twats, not girls, though. All right. Melina caught doing M, M sculpt Neo after telling people results were from working out at home. Oh, this. See, I don't like these types of lies where it's where you feel like you have to you did the work and you didn't do the work. That's a lie. Not that it matters. Just don't lie. Who cares? It's the, it's the age of do whatever the hell you want. So why are people lying? So let's look at this one. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. Melina Ciciotti, is that you? LOL. All the lies about working out, but it's really M, M sculpt. Stop lying to your followers. Be real. What's that relatable? Okay. Oh, she's got, oh, she's being Neo M sculpt. She's a sponsored post by this. She got paid probably to do it. And here's another one. This is fun, right? M sculpt. No, not Melina X acting like exercising would help to get in shape. So beauty culture med spa. And I think they did it because they tagged her. I don't know how they know this is her though, but it's, they assume it's her. There's no tagging unless I'm missing something. Okay. Um, but M sculpting, I guess means they cut. I don't know. That's, I kind of liked it before. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you guys know me though. Okay. So yeah, so this, the, the person that mod says not hundred percent it's her, but it's pretty sure it is. She follows this account and they have also posted her lip transformation. Timeline also matches up. Okay. Again, just go. If you want to need help getting back in shape and you want to go sculpt your ass, go sculpt your ass, do whatever it takes, do what you got to do to make yourself feel good. Just chill on the overdone. You know, when I say do what makes you happy, I'm also like at the same time, be really careful because that shit becomes addictive and then you're going to end up on botched surgeries on on Reddit, and you don't want to be on that site, I promise. Like, right? Just careful. You know what I'm saying? Explaining why she uses self tanner to hide her white, white, white self. Three whites? Okay. When really I have spent so much time in the sun, when really I just like live in Michigan and it's so cold, like I feel like it looks a little bit too artificial. So I've been trying. Yeah, it does. You look. That looks bad. Brittany Dawn. Be dong. Trying to go for something a little bit more subtle just to kind of get rid of that like whiteness, that like very dramatic, like white, 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 white. Um, and so. Why? So, uh, again, ignorant dad here does no shit about any shit. Is self, t is self tanner is just makeup, right? You just put it. Is it a tinter? Does it tint your skin permanently? Or is it like you literally put tinter makeup on that can be washed off? Why not just, and this is unhealthy. Canadian Dermatology Association says you shouldn't, but why not just go to a tanning booth? It's like 15 minutes a day, three days a week. 
put on some things and do it na- naturally. You know what I mean? It's not really, it's not good for you, but I, f- I feel like self tanner is because you don't want to get the skin cancer, which I sort of agree. If you want to get tanned, I don't know. I don't know where I stand on that. I just feel like don't lie about it is where I stand on it. Why lie about it? Um, Melina accidentally outing her husband's sex. Okay. So, okay. So I think there's a hypocrisy thing here. So we go here to the video because I was feeding myself nasty music like what our world listens to like WAP do you know what that stands for worship and praise no it stands for wet ass <laughs> e-word and he's like yeah I know why do you know that dude you shouldn't know that it's a sin you do it's disgusting I'm sorry can we just say that is disgusting like why why is that okay why don't we talk about that like that song is gross well the thing is like the- I can't even listen to it for more than it gets I'm like what? why were you listening to it anyway how what? The goalposts the keep moving, right? We see this in our oh world. Okay. All right. So he says he knows what it means. And then again, this is the hypocrisy. So she, they're sitting here pearl clutching. Oh my God, this is the Christianity coming out, right? This is the, the, the purity culture, the blame the women for everything, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying I like WAP. I think it's a stupid ass song too. But if you're an adult, listen to what you want. But here it is. And then this is the text that apparently she revealed in regards to Ari's birthday reel. I decided to take okay. I decided to take the post down because the music I selected. I did not know the song was from the song WAP. I've never listened to that song other than the 15 seconds I'd heard on TikTok when it was trending last year. And then she said she took she was connected to her new, new, newborn baby. I mean, yeah, that's a song probably pretty connected to birthing. It's coming out of that. I'm just saying, ew, but yeah, right? That's science. <laughs> and then it's the text that she revealed by accident. So I think she was doing a Q and a on Instagram and you can see all your things from who sent you stuff. So, um, <laughs> I think she might've said, she's probably doing some ask me anything or something like that. And then Jordan Ciciotti writes, I heard the word, I heard C U M inside you P U S S Y helps honored to donate if you need any. So they're not like, Okay. You're posting stuff online. You're an idiot. So uh, she must have, they must have freaked when that text came out because they're supposed to be all like better than you. And they're both like clean and they're, they're pure, but they're not pure. So, I mean, that type of joke coming from a guy like that, I'm telling you, that is a guy that jokes with his buddies that doesn't have any standards either. He doesn't have any Christian standards. A guy who does that in secret does it way more than a normal person who would just come out and say the shit. Okay. That's the type of person that's disingenuous. They're hypocrites. They're liars. And they're like every Christian, most Christians I've ever met in churches. They're such effing disgusting liars. Bad parenting explaining children. Oh, we're getting into it now. In my realm now. Kids and I already do well. So I feel like I would, I think I'd manage four kids and I already have all of them named. I'm not going to share the names, but yeah. People who do this, chill. Stop. We did have, we're going to have four girls, by the way. How are you? How can you say that? You don't know that. If we have four girls, I already have all their names picked. I don't have any boy names because boy names are really tricky and I don't want to have boys. So, so you well. That's nice. This, again, a lot of family vloggers do this and they talk because pregnancy is very, very lucrative. They talk like it's just nothing for them to get pregnant. And people need to start realizing to just chill on that stuff. Okay. It's the privilege. It's this, you need to relax because there's, that's the whole thing about influencing culture is how many people it makes feel bad about their own bodies and their own, whatever they're going through. And they never address it. They just say the things they don't care. You know what? If you're out there mama and you can't have a baby or you're struggling, I still feel you. And I just, I want to just make sure that you feel that you are valuable. So maybe don't watch this one, right? Say something. Melina and Jordan laughing when Aletha pushes Ari down. Watch, she's going to push Ari down. Down. Oh. oh yeah, you knew it. <laughs> and he knew he was going to do it. They let her do it. Oh, get it for a video. I don't like them. Um, okay. So <laughs> let's get into the Halloween stuff. This might have to be more video. I got to break down some of her videos in their podcasts. I know I will have to, I know it's getting long, but this is the Halloween thing pisses me off about Christians. Okay. So let's, let's see her post. Okay. Jordan Ciciotti. Hey, somebody, Melina and I did a podcast. This is Jordan. Melina and I did a podcast episode about this a couple years back. Shameless plug. <laughs> we don't care to engage in the festivities of Halloween because of its pagan origins. Oh, Christmas and shit. Okay, cool. Um, that's not to say we don't pass out candy or dress up in costumes for fun, but we aren't embracing the spirit of Halloween. What? So you do everything other people do for Halloween, 
but you just don't embrace the spirit. So why do you say that you don't engage in the festivities Halloween when you then two seconds later you say we engage in the festivities Halloween, you effing idiot? Furthermore, some may say it's ignorant that we put up a tree on Christmas or paint Easter eggs. And while those traditions aren't based in scripture, the true meaning of Christmas, Christ's birth and Easter, Christ, blah, 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 are emphasized in our house. He, the, again, Christians stop boycotting Halloween. It's just, just, it's a place for kids to go get free candy and dress up and have some fun. Stop this bullshit because everything the church is you know, predicated on our holidays, Christmas and Easter, all shit. It doesn't even land on those days. And even Christmas was based on a pagan holiday. Yes, they, it's the birth and death of Jesus Christ. But yeah, if you're going to say you're, you don't do Halloween, but you do Halloween. But oh, we also do Christmas and we paint Easter eggs. You're a flaming hypocrite, you idiots. We both grew up trick-or-treating and dressed in costumes, so it's not like we're not naive to everything. And finally, seeing all the scary or gory decorations around our neighborhood frightens Alethea. So we want to do the best job possible, raising our kids to understand the world in which they live, blah, blah, yeah, by lying to everybody on the internet all the time. Okay, got it. Understood. Christians, stop boycotting Halloween. You make your neighbors hate you. They think you're silly and dumb. And you're like, oh, we're going to do the trunk or treat at the old church. Dur, 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 uh, come out. It's just kids getting candy. So there's a couple decorations. Relax. Hey, kid, that is a fake decoration. It's not real. It's made of plastic by the dollar store. Teach your kids. Oh, dairy. this is dairy. And Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> dairy is a boomer. Boomer. If there was, if you look up, like you open a dictionary and open up to boomer. Beep, 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 boo, 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 boobs, boomer. You're going to see a picture of dairy. <laughs> Probably in those shitty Oakley sunglasses. Hi guys, I'm the special guest. <laughs> if you guys are watching the video... You finally get to see what Derry looks like. We don't give a shit. Okay, so I don't, I'm not going through the whole podcast. Malene dressing up, and then here's the hypocrisy in full effect. We don't dress up for Halloween. We did when we were kids, but not anymore. And then here we are. My kids don't like horror and, you know, seeing scary decorations. But look at this picture of us scratching my wife's face off. <laughs> Guys, if you can be called out for hypocrisy, and it's so easy to prove, stop it! You idiots! Oh my, what big claws you have. Mm -hmm. Again, all these two morons have to do at this point, okay, is just say, guys, you called us out. All of our lies are exposed. We're sorry. You're right. We suck ass. We're going to do better. But they won't because the devil made them do it. Other, Melina's sister saying the dog who has severe hip pain and has surgery enjoys being sat on and pulled by children. Melina's best friend posting about wearing a mask during worldwide pandemic is a satanical ritual. What? Who is this? Melina's best friend, Esther, is nuts. And her name is Esther. So. She was definitely Christian homeschooled. Okay. Sorry, I don't follow satanic rituals disguised as public health mandates. If you're going to call wearing a mask, look, I'm, I'm not for wearing the mask anymore. I'm kind of over it unless you're going to mandate the KN95. It's the only mandate I think you should do. Like, if you mandate me to wear a seatbelt, I'm going to wear a seatbelt, right? You mandate me to wear a mask that's going to protect me, and you should get everybody to wear that. That's what I'm down for. Mandating cloth masks and shit didn't do anything, and we know that. But it's not a satanic ritual, you moron. Why do people do this? You make people hate the church more. At this point, I feel like it's on purpose. I feel like these people are obtuse on purpose. Like, when God hardened Pharaoh's heart, I feel like at this point, God is making the church look stupid. To tear that shit to shreds and rebuild it. I honestly believe it. I honestly believe God is hardening people's hearts to look and f and act stupid in the, in the world. For all the things that are going on, churches should just be neutral. They should love. I don't care what you do. We love you. The end. Idiots. So. Well... Okay, so there's just a bunch of lies. There's a bu there's a whole ton more, man. There's just so there's videos out there with all of it. Um, there's so many threads about her here, um, about her husband and all their lies. And this guy definitely, okay, okay, buddy. I'm sure, you were a virgin when you got married. I doubt they were. Um, but there's lies about her and her sister doing drugs when they were eight. And she said, I didn't do drugs, and then she's like, Yeah, we smoked weed all the time. So everything that she comes out and says as a Christian ends up being a lie. And I'm just sitting here as someone who, you know, is, is deconstruction is in a deconstruction phase of my faith. And I'm just sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I know so many of these people. I was this person for a long period of my life. Although I was a little bit more vocal about my, my fundamentalist beliefs and ideals. I did honestly think I was better than people. I didn't look at girls with lust in my eyes. I honestly was fundamental. Like I was like, if you listen to secular music, you're burning in hell. 
We should smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, burning in hell. I used to think all these things. And I was really, really stringent in my own faith. And I look back and I'm like, man, not that I missed out on things, but man, I missed out on faith. I missed out on the real side of my faith and the missed opportunities to love people. I missed that. I missed a whole bunch of people. I missed a whole bunch of opportunities to love people where they were. And I'm so sad about that. The way that the church, you know, I was brought up to believe that stuff. I'm so sad about the missed opportunities. That's the, the whole thing with churches and the missed opportunities with, with telling people who wear masks that they're satanic ritualists or that if you do this thing or that thing or the other, you're gay, you're transgender, that you're just burning in hell. Everybody has sin, everybody. If you believe, if these people are like mainline Christians, okay? And I said this before, if you did, if you sin or you do things, if you lie, you're sin just like anybody else is sinning. No sin is greater than others, but the Christian church has told you it is and it's bullshit lie. More secrets and more sin is inside of a church than outside of a church. I, I, I kid you not. It is a cesspool of secrets and sin. And it's compounded because these people represent Christ. It's even worse. Do you get it? So if you rep Christ okay, and you say that you do publicly and yet you can be called on all your effing lies, you are worse. You will be held more accountable. Does that make sense? Your sin isn't greater, but the accountability and the judgment will be made worse. If you rep Christ and you teach the wrong thing or lie or, or an idiot or become a douchebag, God, you are held to a higher standard at judgment time. So good luck with that, dumbass, if you believe what the Bible says. So anyway, that's Melina Sikiati, Sikiati. CC hypocrisy um, in a nutshell. That's what's going on with this. And so I'm glad I kind of know, and I'm going to go down a little bit more of the Christian side of their podcast. I'm going to debunk probably all their shit and boomers stuff over there. Look guys, if you're a Christian in the U S in Canada specifically, can you stop being political? You think Jesus would sit here and be political? Jesus, if anything would be the most centrist ideologue in any political, any, he probably wouldn't even talk about it anyway, but he wouldn't have to. He would just show his love, right? Christians are not supposed to be super conservative either. They're not supposed to be super liberal either. You're supposed to be in the middle. You know why? That word there, again, here it is. Love. It means a lot because all it means is what you're supposed. So all this is a command, right? It's the command that if you followed this one command, Nothing else matters. You'd be living, we'd be living in angels and there's rainbows and care bears everywhere if we just did the one thing. And again, I'm not, I'm guilty of not loving people. Again, I miss tons of opportunities. Even now, I don't love these people. I judge them. But if we did the one thing, okay, as Christians, it's just no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, I love you no matter what. If you want to believe those things, okay, I love you. Okay, if you want to read the Bible and understand for yourself, if you think it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal. Fine. I still love you. I will. It doesn't matter what you do or who you are unless you, I mean, kick me in the nuts or something or hurt my family. It's a little different, you know, to a degree. I'm just saying for the most part, the overall message for the church should be like, doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what you're going to do, what you're doing currently. Come here, get some love. That's it. That's all we're here called to do. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit will do the rest later. If there's a person inside of a church, okay, and that person is transgender, gay, LGBTQ, if they're struggling with marriage problems or cheating, whatever, they're fat, you know, <laughs> so many sins you can go through, like they gossip, they have thoughts in their brain, okay, all those things. If you're at a church, you're there for a reason. If, you're, if you believe in Jesus and who he says he is, it really doesn't matter all those other things, okay, it really doesn't. I know that sounds really weird, but it doesn't. If you honestly, truly in your heart believe in Jesus and who he says he was, you're good to go. Yeah, we're all going to get judged though because we all sin, every single one of us. None of us are perfect. None of us are even close. Not even a little bit. And Christians often are worse because they have to hide it while representing Christ. And then when they get called out, shit falls apart. Like all the pastors right now. I'm going to do a video on Hillsong soon. You watch. It's going to be crazy. So... I know that sounds so super simplistic, but in your heart, if it's genuine, your faith is genuine, you're good to go. Hope that makes sense. Don't listen to these people. They're assholes. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Love it. You guys are amazing. I hope you have an amazing day. This week, the Tiffany, the fall of Tiffany Raquel, my documentary series that I'm making, it falls, I hope. It's, it's, a, it's a labor of love. 
And it's something I think is going to be a lasting legacy of this channel. Something that you can watch and just share. And it's 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 not neutral, but it's like very, very polished and well put together type of documentary. So I hope you stick around for that. It's coming soon. But you guys are incredible and you're valuable. And if you just learn to love those around you, I think most of you do. I think most of you just understand it's just easier to just love somebody. Unless they're a-holes. It's hard to love them though, but you should. And if you did the one thing, you'd be good. For those of you who don't believe in that stuff, don't worry about it. You don't believe in it. Don't worry about it. You're all good too. I hope you have an amazing day. Don't ever forget your value. I'll see you tomorrow.